In this video, I am going to talk about hemodialysis machines. And if you are a new nurse, um, a new dialysis patient, or an ICU nurse, I know that you have questions about these machines. I know you have anxiety. I know you have fear. And by watching this video, I am going to answer your questions and I am going to ease your anxiety and you are going to learn to trust these machines a little bit more. Later on in the video, I am going to give you a tour of some of my favorite features of the Bebron machine. And until then, I just, I, I wanna share with you some of my experiences with these machines, things that have helped me trust these machines. Because one of my fears with coming into the dialysis profession is that I was gonna hurt a patient um, because of something I did. I don't know what I don't know. So I really had to ask questions and just, experience experience taught me a lot so with that i'm gonna, I'm gonna share some of my experience uh, i've been a dialysis nurse six years and mainly we've worked with the bebron dialysis machines and at this point i trust these machines i trust them to tell me when they're not working and when they are working through the years i have seen a lot of different like malfunction alarms before i even hook it up to the patient there might be a high temp alarm a df pressure alarm or like a valve is busted the machine is going to tell me when i turn it on it is going through so many double checks to make sure that it is safe to provide treatment for the patient and it's I'll, our machines get a lot of use and sometimes they do break down and the machines tell me don't get me wrong i still have to do my double checks to make sure that i'm providing safe dialysis um, at our clinic where i work the protocol is that we check the ph before every treatment we verify that the conductivity is right on the machine and um, the machine temp uh, we also do our water checks every four hours. What I've really learned is if the machine tells you that it is working, I trust it. If the machine tells me that it's not working, I trust it. And that is really the number one thing I want you to take away from these videos is that the machine is going to tell you when it's not working. And when it's not working, I will pull it and I will call Biomed and they will know exactly what to do. And they will fix it and they will verify that it's fixed before we can bring it back onto the floor. There are, there's a lot of things that can go wrong with the machines. I have been working dialysis for six years and I get new like malfunction alarms all the time, but I don't have to fix that alarm. <laughs> you know, I just have to pull the machine and then have my biomed team fix it and they do a great job. I also wanna thank you guys. I cannot do this alone. So thank you for watching these videos. If you like what I have to say or learning something, please like, subscribe, become a member of my channel because by that you are helping my videos reach more people. You are helping my videos go up in the algorithm and find more people just like you. So by helping me, you are helping many other people just like you. So I just wanna thank you. Anything else about machines? Don't think so. So with that, let's get started with the tour. Let's roll the tape. This is a screen of a Bebron dialysis machine. Up top here, we can pick hemodialysis or we can pick, pick disinfection and let's get this video started. I'm gonna choose hemodialysis and let's go through. I'm gonna pause every now and then. The first alarm that we're gonna see is filter will soon be expired. Like what is that, an alarm already? Don't worry, don't worry. There is a filter on the back of the machine that needs to be changed like every 200 treatments and you change it and then you disinfect it and a few other things. I should I should do a video on that, but we, you do not have to worry about that alarm right now. Just lucky that we get to see it. Let's start the video. So I am gonna choose, so here I choose this NA with the waves. So NA, in a previous video, we learned NA is sodium and sodium is conductivity. It's just, they're all inner exchanged. So when it comes to sodium, we need to, we're thinking about the dialysate. We're thinking about the water, the bicarb, and the acid all mixing into a safe level. It's kind of like the, um, like the diffusion like what is going on with the diffusion we have over here we have we have ultrafiltration where we remove the fluid and this first button we're going to check to make sure what uh, what the dial dialysate is set at so up top here if i were to change anything about these dialysis machines i wish that this was not here we can say what dialysate bath we are using um let's go back so here you can we can choose what dialysate bath we're using and when we're new we think 
it, it sounds like the machine is making that dialysate and it has control over what the um, the recipe, what is in our dialysate. It can make a 2K, a 2 potassium, or it can make a 3 potassium bath. And that just is not true. So a lot of the mistakes that I see with this is we choose the right bath on this machine, but then but then we don't have the right bath actually where the wand is. I'll show you the wand later. So that is that is the feature that I would remove. Um, but if we had a 2K, 2.5 calcium bath, that is what we choose. And we'd also make sure that the wand, this little red wand, this magic wand is also in the right bath. And the machine doesn't know if you have the right bath or not. So that is one of the important double checks that we do as um, people that care for dialysis patients. Next is the concentrate profile. Oh my God, another name for conductivity, really? Lindsay I know concentrate profile how what is the concentrate of our sodium of our bicart acid and do, usually what I see where I work this number is either set at 138 or 140 because that's what our blood sodium is okay so it's it we want it to we want it to match and we can change by clicking the buttons um, here is this is where in another video I talked about conductivity profiles this is where I set it in the B Brown machine here we have a selected value of 140 so all across this three and a half hours the conductivity is going to be at 138 an example of a physician order would be a conductivity profile of 150 starting and then decreasing by 50% to 138 like how do I put that in the machine this is how you do it I'm going to click on that first bar and I'm going to put in the value that the, doc the doctor ordered. He ordered 150 or she or they and then I'm going to click on this very last bar how oh, it says 140. I'm going to click on that last bar and I'm going to choose 138 whatever the provider ordered and now oh god I did that fast so let's go see it again. So here I'm going to choose 138. Oh, I guess the provider ordered 135. That's what I put in. So at this first bar, we have 150. This last bar, you're going to see 135. You see how this is higher, kind of at the 150 mark, and this one's lower at the 135 mark. And then there's this linear button right here. I'm going to click on that and then watch what happens. Ta-da! So now it just steps down until we get to the end to the, what the provider ordered. Um, if you want to know more about why we do these conductivity profiles, I'll link in that uh, video right here. It is, I really enjoyed that video too. So please, please watch. Okay, what else can this machine do? All right, now I went back. Here we have dialysate flow. Um, my clinic, we do 600 or 800. Maybe we have somebody in 500, but this is what the provider orders, how fast the dialysate is going through the filter. And I can move it up and down according to the provider orders. 800, we're going a little faster. Uh, the other thing that is on here, this is the bicart concentrate. This, this, um, I don't play with like ever. The doctor will write either 34 or 35 is usually what I see for this bicarbonate um, profile. And then here we can also set the dialysate fluid temperature. Here it's set at 36. Per my facility protocol, if somebody has hypotension or any kind of hypotension or any kind of symptoms, I can lower that machine temp. So if we're lower, like why would we, why does the temperature care? Like 36 um, is lower than body temperature, 36 degrees Celsius. Um, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll link in, let's right here, like right now, I'm going to link in the conversion rate. All right. So body temperature. So this is going to be a little colder. It's going to be a little colder so this is another reason why patients are cold on the machine because we're because we're cooling the blood we're cooling their blood because we want them to tolerate dialysis better so if their blood is cooler what do we do we vasoconstrict right and that makes our blood pressure go up so by making them a little, them a little colder we are helping their blood pressure stay up to remove that extra fluid wow like this machine does so much what, what else so now i'm going to go into the the blue and red the uf See how that's kind of dented in now? That's what screen I'm in. So this, so the first one, like I said, had to do the diffusion, all right? The conductivity, the machine temp, the mixture of the dialysate. Now this just has to do with how much fluid I'm gonna remove. So we have two main parts to this machine, all right? So up here, ultrafiltration volume. How much fluid are we gonna remove during dialysis? What is their UF rate? It also has a therapy time. So we right now we're removing 2,000 mils or two liters over three and a half hours. 
um, this minimum UF rate. I haven't played around with this much. I don't think it can go any lower than 50, but it can go higher. But this is just what our facility protocol is for minimum UFR. So if somebody is cramping or they have low blood pressure and I need to stop removing fluid, but I can still continue with dialysis, I'm going to hit that minimum UF button and then it's going to do 50 mils per hour. Minimum UF, the minimum amount of ultrafiltration, the minimum amount of fluid that we are going, we are going to remove during the dialysis at a time. Upper limit UF rate, two, this is a safety feature. So the most that we can do, like what if I put in 2000? I wanted to put in 2000, but I actually like put an extra zero there. And it's like, I'm trying to remove 20 liters in three and a half hours. That's dangerous, right? Like, I don't wanna do that. That is very unsafe. So this is a feature. This is a safety feature. So if I do that, it's gonna be like, Lindsay, this is too much fluid. Like, can you, can you check? check those numbers. So the most that I can ever remove is 2000 mils per hour. I have had to increase this for one patient one time over my six years of dialysis nursing. So that generally never changes. It also does, sometimes you'll get patients that'll be like, Lindsay, I need to be done by 415. I need to be done by 1615. And I'll be like, oh, right now you're going to be done at 430. And they'll be like, oh, can you cut it? Like, I'll sign an AMA form. I just, I have got to get to an appointment. I have a hot dinner date. Like, I've got something going on. I need to be done. So then I can change the therapy time here. Let's see. So that's me changing the fluid goal. I can go up and down. Um, I can also key it in just like that. I can do, change the time, go up and down. And then I can hit that keyboard and I can manually put it in instead of going up and down. So now they're going to be done about 1700, about five o'clock. Now, now this one right here, that is heparin. So heparin stop time, what I'm going to give them a bolus, their initial heparin dose, and then if they have a profile rate. So that is what I'm going to key in there. I'm going to verify that that is correct. And then if I, this is pushed in, I'm doing treatment without heparin because not everybody gets heparin. So stop time one hour. I'm going to do a bolus of one mil. Um, generally the heparins, at least where I'm working, it's 1,000 units per mil. So I'm doing 1,000 um, units per mil. And then here, pretty, it's a pretty, um, a pretty standard, a pretty like common heparin order where we give them a one mil bolus and then over, if they have a fistula, we're gonna stop treatment, we're gonna stop heparin with an hour left, right? Because if we are giving them heparin through their whole treatment, and then I take out their needles, they're going to bleed. So most of our fistula patients, our graft patients, the heparin stop time is one hour or a half an hour. So they, they don't bleed so much uh, when we take those needles out. So very common order. If they have catheters, we have clamps. So those uh, catheter patients generally have a stop time of zero from my experience. Ooh, this is a cool feature, KT over V button. This um, this will tell us how well we're cleaning their blood. So we need to put in the patient's weight. The target KT over V is 1.2 and that comes from CMS. CMS tells us we have better outcomes if our patient's KT over V target is 1.2. I'll be honest, we don't use this feature very often at our dialysis unit. We do, we draw their blood and we do a calculation through our EMR. We don't use this machine, the machine, but um, it does kind of, if we're like, oh, I wonder if they're going to make it today. We'll, we'll be able to see their target at the end of treatment. So, but what I have to do, um, KT, KT over V calculation requires the patient's weight. So I'm going to put in their weight there. Um, target warning on, treatment time. I can also change the treatment time there. Going back to three and a half hours. It tells me the blood flow. And then I can also change the, the dialysate from that screen. So we, there are two places that we can change the treatment time and the dialysate flow rate with these, with these B-Bron dialysis machines. All right. So now I guess I'll just move. I'm going to move over here. Here I am. So now I, to get rid of that screen that was up here, I click this button right over here where the finger is to get to the keyboard. This is the blood pressure. 
where we read the blood pressure. We push, if we click on it and it will take the patient's blood pressure. Here we have blood flow. I just will, would like to point out that it is mils per minute. And then here is what the heparin rate is up there too. So those are things that you can see on the main screen during dialysis. Yellow screen means something either blood pressure is out of parameters start this is all has to do with pump speed down here start pump stop pump go up and down on the on the pump speed my computer's working hard here see how i went up on the pump speed here up to 90 mils per minute usually we do 350 mils per minute fast right next i'm going to click on this um next you're going to see me click on this eyeball up here So the eyeball tells me a few things. It tells me this is an L for liters. So if we're mid-treatment, it'll tell me how much, how many liters of blood I've cleaned during the treatment time, how much heparin they've gotten, how much fluid I've removed, and any kind of infusions. Infusions generally, if I have to give them saline and I give it through the machine, it'll tell me how much saline I had to give them during treatment. I can get the KTO V reading from that eyeball screen once treatment is complete. Let me just back up a little bit. Gosh, I always seem to be in the way. Let's hit play again. Back door, and then here is the blood pressure button. I'm gonna click on that blood pressure button. And this is where I can see all of my blood pressure readings there. The other thing is like we can do cycle time every half hour, every 15 minutes, every five minutes, if, if I, however often I need to check the blood pressure. In, in chronics, we're required minimally to check the blood pressure every half hour. If I'm in the hospital setting, and then I minimally need to check it every 15 minutes, but I can um, check it more often if I want to. This button needs to be pushed down. This means that the blood pressure is cycling. When we first started with these machines, we were missing a lot of blood pressures because that button was not pushed down. And then to get to the previous screen, you just kind of, you want to go through that back door. All right. If this is lit up, that means that the machine, that the pump is stopped. Now the pump is going up and down on the pump speed. Silence button, and that's a confirm button. It usually, um, the machine will tell you when it wants that button to be pushed. Oh my gosh, now here's, remember at the beginning of the video where I was talking about the two, K, two potassium, three potassium, I pick what bath it is, but if this wand is not in the right bath, then I'm in the wrong bath. So I just need to make sure that that is in the right jug, or if you have a wall, like a wall, um, a wall unit that you hook that up to that's that's what that is this over here is where our bicart is so we some units have like a big pool of bicart that like mixes and then goes into the machine these machines have in individual bicarts that hook up right here you click that metal I'm gonna move again you click that metal button and it'll go up and down and while we're setting up the machine, in the next video I'm really going to show you. Um, I'm going to show you how to set up the machines because right now um, the machine really has two parts: the part where I prime the lines, and then the part where it does all of the double checks that I talked about at the beginning of the video. It makes sure that everything is safe. And um, we have the date, we have the time over here. Um, I have another video that shows you how to set up like the timer if you need like a reminder in an hour to do something with the patient. Pressure test. This is while I'm setting up the machine, priming the line, the machine itself is getting the dial state ready and um, making sure that it is safe to use. Thank you for watching. Thank you for, the, for your support. I, I, I mean it when I say that I cannot do this alone.